Hi, it's Casper here from uh, Laser Food. Just spending a bit of time going through how to uh, work with this um, DIY bauble file um, that's on our Etsy page. Um, I'll be using Inkscape and uh, opening up the file so that you can um, pull the individual parts together, uh, snowflakes, and type in your own words and select a a bauble file from the outside and make your own uh, to be um, you know any any kind of uh, style you like I'll be going through some of the the, the tips that um, we have to do designing the file and for you know setting the file up for cutting as well so if you've purchased this um, you will be looking at the uh, possibly the SVG file uh, with um, all these different parts in it, and um, this is you know not everything you'll want to cut. So I always recommend that you copy out some of the bits that you uh, prefer to use uh, into a new file, a clean file, and uh, just start working on it there. So I selected that. I'm going to do Control C to copy. I'm going to do File New. This is a shortcut for File New here. It's just going to open up into a, a blank um, Inkscape page. I'm going to get rid of the um, dialog boxes on the side and then paste in into the middle of our screen here. OK. So select out. So now um, we've got uh, these blank items um, that you can see are already separate um, items. Uh, they're all um, subtracted. Um, individual kind of uh, Boolean objects, meaning if you go and click on fill, you can see that the holes are already subtracted. Uh, likewise with the, the snowflakes. So what I'm going to do is um, going to start um, putting this together with a, a name so that you can see what uh, how best to do it. Now, picking a font is, is one of the um, main things that's going to help here. You don't want too thin a font. Um, it's got to be nice, a nice kind of script, ideally, but... Um, nothing too thin and wispy so that it, it, that it breaks um, when it's cut with a laser or if someone's handling it. So um, I'm going to do this one for Gale. Um, I'm going to pick a, a size so it roughly fits in the middle. Maybe a bit bigger. So this is still a font. It's not an object. I can I can mess about and change it. Um, you'll notice in Inkscape now that I've um, clicked away onto the the main cursor icon. I know can no longer see the, the 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 font stuff. You have to go and click back onto the create and edit text in order to get all these up again. Um, so clicking anywhere in there, you can just go ahead and adjust the size. Nice and easy. Um, you can also uh, drag it um, to different sizes. What you'll notice here is you need to put the, the padlock on, otherwise you will drag it into a, a, an odd shape. Control Z to undo. Um, so put the padlock on and then drag it so it, it changes shape in, in proportion. Um, so this could be quite good, but I, I'm still wary of the uh, how thin these these parts are. So I'm going to look for a, another font. Um, Inkscape's quite neat. You can click in the, the the font dialog there and just start scrolling through the fonts that you've got on your system. Um, so you might download new fonts uh, and install them onto your computer. Um, 
just note that when you do that, um, you won't see it in Inkscape immediately. You've got to close down Inkscape and start it up again before you can see those new fonts. That's not bad, but it could be a little bit uh, neater. You really just want something that is uh, connected together and um, isn't going to require too much work um, moving the uh, the letters around and uh, making it look neat. I'm looking for one that's just a little bit thicker. Let's see some Halloween ones in here. Yeah, that one's good. A little bit big for fitting in perhaps, but you can see here now that the lines that connect the letters together, although it still looks nice and scripty, it's um, it's not too um, chunky. Sorry, it's not too um, fine. I'm just gonna make it ever so slightly bigger so I can get the edge of that um, L in as well. So you can see here, this is going to fit reasonably well. Um, I'm going to make this the the the, back, the main bauble part black as well, so I get a a rough idea of what it's going to look like when I um, uh, I'm going to cut it out. It's just a quick um, sneak preview, but you you can imagine that um, these uh, letters in the middle are going to be still going to be a bit flexible if someone puts their thumb through it. So a, a neat thing we can do is go and add in some of these snowflakes. Now, what you'll notice as you're kind of carefully um, positioning these, um, you'll, um, you'll want to try and um, orient them so that they catch, maybe, oops, control Z to undo that, so that they catch a few letters. Um, and you're looking for something that kind of supports um, more than one letter in the middle there. I might put another one from the top to uh, to capture that. If it's not catching everything, uh, click once more. Oops. Clicks once more on the snowflake, and now you can get to rotate it rather than uh, move it. Okay. Now you can use the arrow keys on your keyboard to to, to gently move it. I'm going to zoom in a bit, so I'm going to control key and middle mouse wheel to just scroll wheel to, to move in a bit more. So now I can move in and I'm actually going to make this snowflake just a little bit bigger. So click away, make sure the padlock's on and just grow it just a little bit more. Good. I'm happy with that. Oops. Yeah. Happy with that. That'll do. So that's going to uh, support um, the G and the A under there. And I'm going to want another one on the top here to support um, the I. Now. You're looking at this and you're saying the dot on the eye is hanging out on its own. Um, we're going to need to do something with that and uh, I'm going to do that just now. So what I have to do first of all is I have to um, move the, the dot on the eye down to merge it with um, the other piece here, uh, the rest of the eye. And then I can uh, weld in the snowflake to, to catch uh, the eye as well. So. Uh, a really neat feature of Inkscape is when we go to Union to Object, it automatically turns the font into an object or a path. So I pick uh, the word, I pick uh, the other object, and I go Path Union. Um, a shortcut you'll see here is um, Control and Plus. So once you get into the hang of it, you'll be doing Control and Plus on your keyboard and then control and minus as well for subtracting. But just now we're gonna add them together. Okay, that worked quite well. 
Uh, we might as well add this one in as well, and I'll use Control and Plus on my keyboard. Okay, good, good. Now I'm going to switch over to the Node tool. You'll see it highlights all the nodes around everything, and that's a, a quick and easy way of seeing that this is now no longer a font. It's a, a proper path. Um, I'm going to change this line thickness because it's just going to be a little bit too hard to see. So while it's all highlighted, I'm going to right click on the 0.5 down there and I'm going to change that to 0.1. You see how we can see that so much easier now. Draw a rectangle around those nodes. Great thing with Inkscape, now we can just use the keyboard and the arrow keys on the keyboard to move this down. And if you find it's, it's moved too far, like uh, just with the arrow, you can use the Alt key um, on a Windows uh, keyboard to move it just a little bit further, just uh, more gently. Um, then drag across the nodes here. I, I always do this just to try and capture all the nodes in that rough area there. And then just do Control and Plus again to union these together. And you can see it's added the dot of the eye onto the top there just as a, a neat little hack to um, to still make it look like an eye, but um, keep it from uh, disappearing in the laser cutter. So this, um, this snowflake here, uh, I'm going to move this into rough position. Um, you see what it's doing here? It's, it's trying to uh, snap onto some of these nodes that are already here. So over here is the snap options. And you can just switch them off and that makes um, moving this around so much easier now. And you, you don't necessarily need the snap tools right now to, to hold the position. So I'm just going to um, drag this in to make it a bit larger. catch the L and the top, holding the Alt key just to make sure, just a little bit bigger, doesn't have to be precise. I'm just going to change the line thickness there, it's really chunky down to 0.1 so I can make sure that I've caught everything. So yeah, that's going to overlap when I weld that, that's going to hold it two together, same here, same, same, same. Um, I don't like the way that is just isn't quite touching here, so I'm going to use the hold the Alt key and use my arrows just to make sure it's it's in just a little bit more. Just so when you use union it, it doesn't leave the two items separate. Um, it can just make it just a, a fine point, you know, on the laser cutter that it try, it's trying to keep these two items separate and just can make it a little trickier. Okay, holding down, so I'll do that again. So um, left click, click the item that you want to add, hold down shift and left click again to pick the rest of the, the bauble and then hold control key and plus to union. And you see it's all uh, added that together now. So that's come out uh, nice and neat. I don't think there's anything else that I want to add to that. Uh, you can, of course, um, add uh, different things in. Uh, but that's good. Let's just put the black fill on to give us an idea of what it'll look like when it's cut out. I think that'll be pretty good. Now, point to note here, the, um, the, the dimensions of this bauble, it's uh, 82 millimeters or 82.5 millimeters wide, 100 millimeters high. You don't want to go much smaller than that, um, cutting um, things like these snowflakes, unless you've got good fine control over your power and speed on your laser. Um, just to change that to inches if you're more comfortable with inches. So 3.25 roughly inches uh, wide. Um, if you shrink this bauble much, much smaller, you'll um, you'll end up burning through um, 
the really fine parts in, in this geometry. So that's it. Um, I'm going to uh, save that and um, you can now um, send this, uh, save this as an SVG and you can send that to the laser cutter. So get rid of this. I like to always move it up to the top left of the page just so that we can use as much of the material as possible. And now that's good to go. So I'm going to file, save as, and I'll save it onto the desktop. DIY Christmas. Okay, thank you, and um, I'll um, keep on uploading more files um, to help with uh, editing and personalizing some of these different designs. Thank you, thanks for watching.